Welcome back to Epicus Gamicus Musicus, here for Year by Year 1986, and I believe it is my year to go first, uh, and my first album from 86 is Master of Puppets. Awesome. Metallica. Iconic for them. Yes. Yeah, I guess this is like their classic album. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you got Battery, the title yeah, track. Yeah, yeah. It's awesome. Um, what, the thing that should not be Welcome Home, that's just the whole A side. Yeah, it's basically, just all yeah. Side. It's really, got a, it's really got a much stronger A side than B side. I, I kind of like Orion though, honestly. Mm. Yeah, good instrumental. Yeah. But I think the the classics are in the A side. Definitely, yeah. Yeah. So do you listen to much Metallica? Uh, not particularly now. But on occasion. You yeah, just, you know, spice things up. Yeah, I really I really prefer Ride the Lightning, but. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's a little more raw than. Yeah, Master Puppets, but Master Puppets still has the killer. Maybe, maybe Master Puppets is, is just kind of the first two songs are kind of overplayed, so yeah, it's a little yeah. Uh, don't know what the word is, but you know, <laughs> you know. Uh, what's your first album? Uh, my first album is I want to say it's Third Stage, Boston. Nice, Boston's '80s album. Oh yeah, <laughs> V1. <laughs> well, you know, that Boston are a decade in band. You know. Yeah, you they know. Get one album every ten years. <laughs> you got um, drawn a blank. Uh, We're ready, Amanda. Cool um, engines. Yeah, Cool engines is awesome. Love that song. It's a good one. Yeah, like you said, Amanda. Amanda's a great, it's a great ballad. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's another good driving album from them. You can always count on Boston for that. Yeah. Oh, and the the last track, Holly Ann, is pretty good. Too. Yeah. Yeah. They got two songs after Girls and Engine. Right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, uh, like I said the last time we talked about Boston, Boston are just always almost perfect, you know? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. They really go in abo- above and beyond production-wise. Yeah, they really just, like, they keep the same sound, so they're not really, like, connected to any one decade yeah yeah i mean their albums always kind of fit into the decade yeah like the 90s album the 2000s and the newest album was a little i think boston's kind of too old they're kind of <laughs> well, they've kind of passed <laughs> start their the region they're not, yeah. not they're not in here anymore but yeah excellent album and i should point out that jake that luke <laughs> oh, jake, uh, luke's wearing a boston t-shirt i am he came prepared <laughs> All right, so my next album is Summer in Time by Iron Maiden. Probably one of their lesser-known 80s albums. Yeah, I can see that, yeah. But it's, and I think it's it's because it's got a unique sound. It's not quite the same as, uh, say, Power Slave or Number of the Beast. But you got a lot of great songs. You got um, Wasted Years. It's like the only ballad Iron Maiden has ever written. (laughs) Um, Caught Somewhere in Time. My favorite is Heaven Can Wait, which is a weird song because it's kind of fast for Iron Maiden. Yeah, it kind of is. It's like, I guess it's kind of speed metal. Then you've got um, Alexander the Great. Another interesting track from the... Nice history lesson. Yeah. Um, I personally like Deja Vu is a nice one, too. Yeah, yeah. It's a... it's funny, Deja Vu doesn't seem like something you could write a metal song about, but when you actually do it, it actually you can uh, kind of make it sound... Kind of creepy, yeah. Kind of, yeah. It's it's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> yep, another great album from Iron Maiden. Yeah, definitely. So your number two. My number two is "Slippery When Wet" Bon Jovi. I I would venture to say this is his icon album. You got "You Give Love a Bad Name," "Living on a Prayer." Wanted Dead or Alive. I mean, there's three hits right there. Yeah, yeah. It's just a solid album for him. Yeah. I've always found Bo- uh, Bon Jovi to be a little light. They kind of... Yeah, they're yeah. They're like a kind of weak metal band. And I mean, and it's, it, really, it's really more kind of hair metal. Like. Yeah. It's more It's more like the, peop- like the people who listen to Bon Jovi and don't listen to any other 80s rock band. Yeah. They're the one that's like... That is. What is? Are they really that much better than everyone? Gotta else? say that is pretty common for it's his so fans. Weird. Like, will you listen to some Motley Crue, maybe? You yeah. Know, <laughs> <You know? laughs> 
So, I mean, even, like, Judas Priest's songs, which are, like, as poppy as Bon Jovi, almost. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. But, yeah, I enjoyed listening to it. Yeah, it's always... It is a bit overplayed, but it's always kind of fun to listen to if you just listen for the music, you know? Yeah. Uh, okay, so my last album is, I think, the first hip-hop album, uh, Licensed to Ill oh, by yeah. the Beastie Boys. Man, what do you not have on this album? Yeah, I mean, you got Zeppelin samples. Um, you got um, war samples, actually. Yeah, you got some of those. I mean, yeah, basically just one whole song is just Slow Ride by Foggy, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> That's actually where they sample War, I want to say. Is it in that song? because they use Lowrider as part of the sample on that. Yeah. Really Wait, oh, is it Lowrider? I think they sample both, I want to say. But it's named after the Foghat song. Right. The sample, yeah. Just and to th- add to the confusion behind that. Yeah, and you've also got, I mean, the classics Fight for Your Right, No Sleep Till Brooklyn. Brass Monkey. Yeah. <laughs> That's got a great it's always like, a a fun brass one. section to it, you know? <laughs> Um, and fun fact, No Sleep Till Brooklyn has uh, Kerry King from Slayer doing a solo. Did not know that. Yeah. And if you listen to the solo knowing that, it makes perfect sense. Right, it yeah. It really does. It's that kind of thing. But yeah, I like I liked the Beastie Boys because they sample, like, rock music. And yeah. But they also have the drum machines and everything in there. Very, it's a one-of-a-kind band. I've got to give them yeah. that. And it, it really is a, a hip hop band, a real hip hop band that yeah. is accessible to classic rock fans because yeah, of exactly. the sampling they use. Yeah. And you go, oh, I know that song. And that's what that's what hip hop should be about. It's like, oh, I know that. And you, yeah, and you can like you hear the sample and you go, oh, that's cool. That's I think a lost art now that because they can't sample anything, they're not paying ridiculous royalty fees anymore. Right. Yeah. So the only people who can afford to sample anymore are people like Kanye West. <laughs> Just gotta rely on him to sample. Everybody stuff. else making all these lame beats. Yeah. Uh, so, what's your last album? Uh, my last album is "Back in the High Life" by Steve Winwood. Gotta say, personally, it's not my favorite Winwood solo album. I think that would have to be "Arc of a Diver," but um, still a great album. You've got um. Back in the High Life again. I guess you would say the title track there, even though it's slightly off. Yeah. You've got um, Higher Low. That's a um, good one. Let me think. It's on the tip of my tongue, man. Uh, Let me see the... Finer Things. It's always a good one. Yeah. Yeah, I actually totally forgot about this album, because I, I think my dad has it, so I listened to it in the past, but... When I saw him here, like, oh yeah, Steve Winwood. Yeah. I used to listen to Steve Winwood. <laughs> it's one of those kind of albums, you know. You just kind of, it's a good album, but it is easy to forget. So you said his best solo album. What band was he in? What do you mean? You said this is Steve Winwood's best solo album. Oh no, I think, honestly, I would call it his second best. His best, but what, I would say, what? would be Ark of a Diver. But what band was he in? Oh, well, uh, let me think. Spencer, Spencer Davis group in the 60s. Um, traffic, late 60s. Um, let me think. What else was he in? I want to say he was in... Um, Blind Faith, yeah. That sounds right. And then looking at his, wi- his Wikipedia page, he was also in Ginger Baker's Air Force. Oh, yeah, that's Whatever correct. Whatever that was. Yeah. <laughs> Um. Well, I guess that was the last album. So, what are we leaving out? There's. I'm gonna have to let Winwood go on this one. Yeah, it's I a good album, but it's just not as rocking. Oh, this is a tough one. I think I'm gonna ditch the Maiden album. Ooh, I think Maiden beats Winwood there. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I guess we'll call it a day. Um, we won't be back next week for. Uh, 87 because I'm doing an EPs episode with somebody else so you can look forward to that top 10 EPs from each of us 
prepare for some metalcore because his list is just all metalcore. <laughs> but yeah, it should be fun.